Hello fellow YouTubers and Happy New Year. It is now January 2015, believe it or not. Well, here we are again in John's workshop and coincidentally my name is John and I would like to show you my latest electronic project. It is a vacuum tube based theremin I built from a schematic I found in a 1950 edition of Electronics Illustrated. I think everyone today knows what a theremin is. It's a, an electronic musical instrument. In fact, it's the very first electronic musical instrument. And it's played by waving your hands in space in front of two antennas, one controlling pitch and one controlling volume. The difficulty is there's no physical contact between the performer and the instrument. The performer has no physical feedback. This makes intonation very difficult. Anybody who has seen the science fiction movies from the 1950s, like uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still, for instance, is very well aware of how creepy the theremin can sound when used in such a production. The theremin was invented by a Russian physicist named Leon Theremin in 1919. He was working in a government-sponsored program to develop proximity sensors which would later be used in various alarm applications. I think Theremin was especially receptive to the musical possibilities of proximity sensors because he had been trained as a classical cellist. Later he came to the United States and the instrument was patented in 1928. It was also mass produced by RCA and for a while was a very popular instrument. It was touted as being very easy to play. In fact, RCA said, anybody who can sing can play a theremin. Well, it turned out to be absolutely the opposite. The theremin is the most difficult instrument possible, more difficult than the violin. I am a retired violinist. I played the violin for many, many years, and I'm very impressed with the similarities between the violin and the theremin. First of all, they both have a usable range of over three octaves. And secondly, the higher the pitch goes on the violin, or the higher the pitch goes on the theremin, the closer together physically the intervals become. For instance, on the violin playing at the far end of the fingerboard, the low pitch, intervals are fairly easy to control, they're fairly far apart. The higher you go on the fingerboard, the shorter the length of the string, the closer together the intervals get to the point where the fingers have to be picked up and replaced. And on the theremin, if my hand were this far away from the pitch antenna, a whole step might look like this. And if I'm right next to the pitch antenna, a whole step would look like this, almost imperceptible. This makes intonation or playing in tune very difficult. Another similarity the two instruments have in common is the use of vibrato. Vibrato is a very slight and rapid variation in pitch centered around the correct pitch, what you want to have. This uh, constant pitch variation is done almost subconsciously, and it's a very important thing for instruments that do not play automatically in tune, like the piano or the guitar. Uh, in the Baroque days, string music did not use vibrato, and the players had to hit pitch immediately and right on. If you've ever listened to Baroque violin music or string music, it may sound a little strange to you without the use of vibrato, but the players had to be extremely skilled to hit pitch immediately the first time and stay on tune. I give them a lot of credit. The theremin operates on the heterodyne principle. There are two radio frequency oscillators. When they are operating at the same frequency, nothing happens. When they are operating at different frequencies, two new frequencies are automatically produced. One is the sum of the original two, which doesn't concern us, and the other is the difference between the original two, which is the audio frequency we listen to when we play the theremin. The frequency of one of the oscillators is varied by means of the pitch antenna. The pitch antenna is actually a proximity sensor. The volume antenna is also a proximity sensor controlling the level of volume. You're never going to see a theremin that looks like this one. 
I built this as an experimental prototype model. On my front panel, I have a tuning control for the first RF oscillator, a tuning control for the second RF oscillator, even though only one oscillator needs to be adjusted. Here I have my nice big red pilot light, my on-off volume control, and my sensitivity control for the volume antenna. Both the volume antenna and the pitch antenna are just standard half-inch copper tubing. Over here, I have my output jack, which is hooked up to an external amplifier because my theremin cannot drive a speaker directly. Okay, let's take a look at the inside and see the wiring and the layout. And here are the guts to my theremin. First of all, it is transformer operated and fuse protected. My rectifier is a 6x4 and the power supply is voltage regulated with a pair of OA2 regulation tubes. Voltage regulation is very important because tube theremins tend to be unstable. In fact, this theremin has to warm up for a good 30 minutes before it is playable. Over here, next to the pitch antenna, is my first or RF oscillator, consisting of a 12BE6 tube, an RF coil, and a variable capacitor. Here is my second RF oscillator with another 12BE6 tube, RF coil, and variable capacitor. Here is my mixer stage, a 12AU7 tube, and here is my audio stage, a 6AN8 tube. And in case you may be worrying you may have to wind your own coils to build a tube theremin, worry no longer. Here is the coil I use. This is a Miller C70RF oscillator coil. It is available from tubesamore.com, which is Antique Electronics. In fact, most of my parts did come from tubesandmore.com. Now that you've seen the parts layout, how it's put together, let me give you a little example of what my theremin sounds like. Please keep in mind I am just learning. I am by no means an expert. Here goes. Mm -hmm. The theremin can actually be a very beautiful, expressive, classical instrument when in the hands of a true virtuoso. For anybody interested in hearing what the theremin can really do, I recommend the recordings of Clara Rockmore. They are available at Amazon on CD. And you won't believe your ears. That's it for now, folks. Happy New Year again. And thank you for listening.